Hello, and welcome to the latest episode where we look at all things Nintendo. This episode, number 42 is going to focus on a multi-screen game and watch from 1988 called Safe Buster. Featuring the bank robber and his bombs, a bank guard and the heavy duty safe. The handheld has a high quality red plastic clamshell case, coupled to a pristine white faceplate adorned with a graphic representation of the gameplay. First offered for sale on January 6th of 1988, the unit sold upwards of 250,000 games. Safe Buster was given the production code of JB63, and was the 54th game and watch issued by Nintendo. The instruction booklet begins with the now somewhat familiar open or unfolded console schematic, showing in detail the location of all primary and secondary controls, screen sprites for upper and lower screens and alarm function. Please feel free to pause to read this section in detail. We should not forget that in the late 80s a digital clock or watch was extremely expensive, albeit a necessary purchase in its own right. So please bear in mind the purchase of this handheld was often justified because of the added value offered by the watch and alarm function. Detailed instructions on setting the watch and alarm functions feature prominently at the beginning of this booklet, which only underscores its importance during this era. The headers, shown here in red ink, start with the obligatory how to play section, followed at the bottom of the page with a brief overview of primary controls. These are then followed on the top of the facing page on the right hand side with more detailed instructions on actually starting the game, likely for a first time player, which is then coupled to how game mode A is different to game mode B. This is followed swiftly with the vital information on how points are accrued or achieved. That info is then followed by another vitally important bit of information about how misses, or lost lives are taken away from you, and finally the way that extra points are gained in the bonus rounds is explained. Pages 8 and 9 of the instruction booklet use a clever flow chart, or flow diagram set up with illustrations to map out the various nuances required from the gameplay. That would likely suit most owners, and sadly many other retro YouTubers to understand the basics of the gameplay for this system. The cautions and warnings, the recommended tolerances to chemicals and temperature, the plan maintenance requirements and the detailed specification sections of this game and watches instruction booklet, once again perfectly underscore the fact that this was a precision instrument, not merely some cheap disposable toy, it was meant to be expensive and it was undoubtedly a valuable piece of technology in its day. Shortly in this episode we will watch some actual gameplay, however I'd like to identify a few things to watch out for before we do. Firstly the bank guard is not able to dump the bombs he has collected in his tube on the bottom screen instantaneously, there is a perceivable lag in the process of dumping them, so watch out for that. Secondly, although not spelt out exactly in the instruction booklet, the use of the torches on the left hand side of the lower screen used to blow up the bomber's cache requires 3-4 to four full tubes, as in 3 bombs in each dumping to the left hand side, this is super hard to achieve. And lastly if you score 200 points, all lost lives will be restored to you. Okay let's watch some gameplay. The game and watch from the multi-screen series called Safe Buster was similar in many ways to the previous multi-screen title, called Oil Panic. The game has you playing as the diligent bank guard, who is trying to protect the safe from the attacks of the bank robber called simply, Willy Bomber. You operate the games with the two red control buttons, which moves your avatar, the bank guard left or right. Willy drops bombs from the top screen down tubes, or pipes and you try to catch the bombs as they fall from above, down a corresponding chute shown on the lower screen. Since you hold a receptacle that can only contain a maximum of 3 bombs at any one time, you have to quickly get rid of them. You do this by simply dumping them to the left or right corner of the lower screen as they start piling up. Throwing them in the left corner is ideal, as it sets flaming torches flying from the blast as they explode, and if you get enough bombs in that left corner, the flaming torches will finally blow up the bomber's arsenal of bombs stored on the top screen and finish off Willy once and for all. Looking at the game in play on the screen shown here, we see that a single life has been lost, and the gameplay has just resumed. If a further two lives are lost the game will end. It is also perhaps worthy to note that only a single point is awarded every time a bomb is captured by the guard in the receptacle on the lower screen, and if we look now at the top screen, in the middle, the score being shown is a mere 15 points. We'll wrap up here on watching the gameplay and finish up with some trivia before saying goodbye. Here we see an example of a complete game as it would have appeared when new, with a white styrofoam or polystyrene tray, two cell or button batteries, stickers and instructions, alongside what is called a shipper carton or box, 
This would have held 10 brand new units destined for the retail store, nearly all of these were destroyed and as a consequence are now highly sought after. Well, I sincerely hope you've enjoyed our little show, if so join me once again for episode 43, thanks for watching.